Hallelujah. This morning, we're going to talk about Thanksgiving. Amen. And the reason why I want to talk about Thanksgiving is because you are going to have reasons to give thanks. So I want to teach you how you are to give God thanks. Amen. Turn your Bibles with me. Psalm 26, verse number 7. Psalm 26, verse number 7. The Bible says that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy, oh, help me read it, that who will publish? That I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy, say it again, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. This year, you will publish with the voice of thanksgiving. This year, you will tell of God's wondrous works in your life. In the name of Jesus. If you believe that, just pray for two seconds. Father, this year, I will tell with the voice of thanksgiving. And I will tell of all your wondrous works. Talk to God. Talk to God. That by his grace, by his power, you will be the one to publish with the voice of thanksgiving. And you will surely be the one to tell of all the wondrous works that God would have done. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thanksgiving is our way of expressing gratitude to God. Amen. Is a way of showing God that we truly appreciate what God has done. And I thank God for all the testimonies. Because when we share testimonies, we are giving the glory back to God. Because it is because God has been faithful that we have testimonies. If God had not been faithful, there would be no testimony. Hallelujah. So I thank God that God has been faithful to you. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. If we don't give God thanks... There are several things that can happen. One, it is because we are too proud. We think we did it by ourselves. And anyone that is proud can never please God. Hallelujah. And two, if we don't give God thanks, we'll be an ingrate. Amen. If I don't have a lot of time, but let me share one story with you real quick. Several years ago, one of, uh, uh, one of my friends came to me and said, oh, my brother just came. Can you help him get a job? And where I was working, I knew some people in the HR. So I spoke to them, and they told him, oh, tell him to go here, register, blah, 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 give them this name. Long To call long story short, he got a job. And he came in one day, looked at me, and he said, oh, how long have you been here? He seems like I was here before you. I looked at him, and I said, don't be me, help you get a job. But he never said thank you. And that left a really bad taste in my mouth. I'm not the one that gave him the job. But I'm the one that God used to be of help to him. Please, don't take people for granted. Say thank you. It's two-letter word that is so easy. Do you think that man will not come back another day and say, please help me with, and I will gladly, with go I mean, I will do it. Don't, because I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. But, the fact is, it will not be with joy. It will be out of compulsion because I know it's the right thing to do. It will not be with joy. I'm just being real with you. I'm not an angel. I'm a man. Praise God. I still eat pandeb yam and ekusisu. Hallelujah. But the fact is, it, it, it really bothered me that someone did you good and you can't say thank you. So please, no matter how small Anything anyone did for you, appreciate them for it. If I, a man, helps, so, no, I'm not the one that gave him a job. I just helped him, connected him, and he got it. I felt that way. God that created us, that gave you breath of life every day, that watched over you every day, that made a way for you every day, if we can't say thank you to him, how do you think he will feel? 
How do you think he will feel? Always give God thanks. Always give God thanks. Even when you think you don't have anything to thank God for. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, there are times, several things are happening, and you wonder, ah, I'm going through so much, this is happening, that is, but you are going through things because you are still alive. If there's no life, you won't go through anything. A dead man is not stressed. Uh -huh. Only the living can go through stress. So thank God you are going through stress because you are living to the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Thanksgiving is not conditional. You hear me? It is not conditional. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Not for everything. In everything. Whether you are in a good situation or a bad situation or a terrible situation, give God thanks. Not to say that don't give testimony, but you don't have to wait for testimonies before you thank God. You wake up in the morning, instead of looking at your phone, the first place you should look, Father, thank you for another day. Hallelujah. So your thanksgiving must not be conditional. Amen. Time, my, my time is, uh, is gone. Do you know that Daniel gave God thanks even when they, after they told him he couldn't pray to God anymore? The Bible says he opened his windows, got on his knees, and he gave God thanks. I'm like, what did he thank God for? For the challenges to come. But he gave God thanks. Things were not in his favor, but he gave God thanks. Number two, when you pray, your prayers must be packaged with thanksgiving. When you pray, you know, the way I know us, even when we say let's worship God and you have 50 prayer points, that worship is just, we have to do it, so let's do it. But what you are thinking of are the 50 things you want to ask God for. Right? Uh, be honest with me now. You want to get, but the thing is, anytime you want to pray, thank God first. Go to him with thanks. Hallelujah. The Bible said in Philippians 4, 6, it said, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With what? With thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. When you package your prayer with thanksgiving, it, gives, it makes the heart of God to be glad. And when you know that God's heart is glad towards you, it will surely give you what you are requesting. Hallelujah. Number three, thanksgiving is a way to stay connected with God. Thanksgiving is a way to stay connected with God. Thank you, Lord. Number four, because of time. Thanksgiving helped to seal our miracles, our blessings, and our testimonies for good. You know what it means to seal? It is done permanently. Hallelujah. Permanently. In Luke chapter 17, from verse 11 to verse 19, the Bible recorded that 10 lepers came to Jesus. 10. And they said, Lord Jesus, please heal us. And what did Jesus tell them? He said, go and show yourself to the high priest. On their way to the high priest, they discovered that the leprosy was gone. Nine continued. I don't know whether they truly went to the high priest or wherever they went. But out of the ten, one turned back, went to Jesus. And the Bible says he, he gave God thanks with a loud voice. And what is the scripture that we read? That I may publish of thy wondrous works. He gave God thanks with a loud voice. And Jesus said... Wait a minute. Why are there not ten of you? But where are the other nine? The other nine could not be found. They just went. But what did Jesus say to this one? He said, your faith has made you whole. So those one received miracle, but they were not made whole. 
But only this one did God pronounce that his faith has made him to be whole. And was it faith that he showed or was it thanksgiving that he gave? He gave thanksgiving, but Jesus said it was his faith. So when you give God thanks, you are showing God that your faith is in him. And that's exactly what happened to this one leper. Hallelujah. So this year, you are going to have testimonies. This year, you are... Look, you are going to publish with your own mouth what God has done. And don't worry who is shocked with it. Amen. Because sometimes we want to sugarcoat and cover it. We don't want everybody to. It's only because it's too small. When something is big, you can't cover it. When God's glory shines, sir, you can't cover it. Even when you try, it will come out. And when it comes out, you people with this is can only be God. So be ready to give God thanks this year. Be ready. Because I know, I know God is going to do something great in this house. Yeah. And when I say in this house, I don't mean building. You know what I mean. It's the people. Glory be to God. I have how many more minutes? You give me five more minutes. You are very generous. Praise God. <laughs> I have wonderful people back there. They didn't want pastor to be stressed out. He will not be stressed in Jesus' name. Amen. Number five, your thanksgiving must be effective. What I mean by effective, let it be heartfelt. Let it not be superficial. You know, say, say it from the bottom of it. If it's not heartfelt, don't even bother. Because God sees our hearts. He knows when we say thank you. He knows when we say thank you. There's a difference between the two. You're saying the same thing. But there's a difference between the two. One is from the bottom of your heart. The other is just lip service. And we know when we're doing lip service to God. My point is don't give God lip service. Give him thanks from the depth of your being. He knows he sees you. He knows, he knows your strength, your weakness. He knows when you're serious, when you're not serious. He knows when things are coming from the depth of your being. Before you give him thanks, just think. What has God done? And use that to give him thanks. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Part of it being effective is that it must cost you something. Because Thanksgiving is a sacrifice. I don't have time to share all these all the scriptures with you. It must cost you something. You know, there was a time that David was going to make an offering to God. He went to the person that sells all the material for the offering. His name was Arahuna. And he went to Arahuna. And Arahuna, seeing David as a king, he said, ah, my lord king. Don't worry about anything. Take whatever you want and go and give God thanks and make your sacrificial offering. You know what David said? I cannot give to God that which cost me nothing. I cannot give to God that which cost me nothing. It must cost you something. And I don't mean money. Because when you say cost in the church now, people will think money first. No, it must cost you something. Whether it is you giving yourself to him, whether it is you giving your, he must cost you something. It's a sacrifice. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let me wrap up with this. Six reasons that you should be full of thanks this year. Number one, it will attribute all your successes and achievements to God. When you give God thanks, you are telling him, it is by him that everything is being done. Number two, it's an evidence of your reliance on God and not on any man. And not even on yourself or your abilities. That my reliance is on God, it is by his grace that I can do all these things. Number three, it confuses the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. And he puts them to shame. Amen. Can you imagine the enemy that is looking for you to be crying and saw you laughing and giving God praise? What do you think? Wait a minute. Did we not attack him last night? 
Did we not try to destroy his life? Did we not? Why is it? He should be sorrowful, but he's giving God thanks. They will say, what did we? They will go back into their shrine and die there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They'll be confused. Hallelujah. So no matter what you're going through, give God thanks. Number four, it is a form of humility before God. Anyone that cannot thank God is because they are proud. And anyone that is proud cannot come before God. Hallelujah. Amen. Number five. You are now in 2023. Do you know there are people that are younger than you that died last year? They didn't make it to this year. Younger than you. Healthier than you. Richer than you. Better than you by all worldly standards. So it's not because we know how to live. We know how to live healthy, eat healthy, and all these things. It is because of the grace and the mercies of God. Number six. That was number five. Reasons why you should give thanks. I gave you four. I gave you five. I can't count now. The reason is you are alive. Some people that are younger than you last year, they've passed on. But you are still living. That's number five. Is that not a reason to thank God? Yeah. Eh, walk with me now. <laughs> Hallelujah. I can count. One, two, three, four. Eh, I went to school. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Glory be to God. And if I can't come, at least my daughter is in the university. She will count for me. <laughs> Praise God. Number six. God did not, I will not allow any form of sickness to come near you. You thank God in advance for that. Amen. If you don't know what it means to be healthy, just walk the hall of an hospital. Just go to an hospital. Walk the halls. Go to any hospital. Walk the halls. You come back home and get on your knees and give God praise. Amen. And you can't say, oh, it's because they didn't eat right. It's because, what about the babies that are in, is it NICU? NICU. Yeah? Yeah, what about the babies that are in NICU? What is their sin? What did they do to be there? But that's not yours. Amen. We had testimony of a baby that was born a preemie and in three days he went home. Do you know there are babies that stayed there for six months? Six months. And we say, we won't give God thanks. <laughs> Glory be to God. Last one. When you give, look, this one, I, 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 let me use it in a funny way. You thank God on credit. You, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. You know God is going to do something. You thank him before <laughs> he does it. Amen. Like I said, this year will be a wonderful year. So you thank God on credit today. To just say, Lord, for what you are going to do in 2023, I'm thanking you in advance. I'm thanking you in anticipation. I'm thanking you because I know you are faithful. I'm thanking you because I know you will do it. And it shall be all to your glory. glory.